Inside Science. Hello, I'm Ali Jennings, and here is a quick roundup of what's been happening in the world of science this month. And the numbers you see on the screen are the studies that I'm talking about. First, a new kind of energy storage has brought us a step closer to a future run on renewables. It's called the proton conducting fuel cell. Now, at the moment, renewables have a bit of a problem. You can generate power while the wind blows or when the sun's out, but we need electricity around the clock. Current batteries can only store enough electricity to charge the grid for a few hours. But proton conducting fuel cells have a different solution. Now, they use electricity to turn water into hydrogen gas, which can then be stored in large amounts for a long time. And that hydrogen can be turned back into electricity by using a fuel cell. Now normally, you would need two bulky bits of kit to do this, but new research out this month has managed to combine the two steps by using, wait for it, an ytterbium co-doped barium serate zirconate electrolyte electrical conducting oxide air steam reversible electrode. Basically, that means that we can make hydrogen while the sun shines and keep the lights on at night, all using the same apparatus. But even more importantly, this invention converts energy with up to 98% efficiency. That's a huge advance. So far, this is just a lab-based prototype. It's about the size of a button. So we'll have to see if these impressive attributes hold up when the technology is made at an industrial scale. And if they do, expect to see banks of tanks of hydrogen gas appearing alongside your neighborhood solar panel fields one step closer to kicking our fossil fuel habit, which we need to do soon. Now, setting aside global warming, air pollution is becoming increasingly deadly. New modeling published this month found that 8.8 .8 million people died from air pollution in 2015. That's more than those who died from tobacco smoking. That's crazy. Governments are happy to tell us not to poison ourselves, but they won't regulate to stop pollution from poisoning us. And if that makes you angry, then trigger warning, this next study may just tip you over the edge. In the US, white people produce more air pollution than black and Hispanic minorities, but those minorities inhale a far greater proportion of that pollution. This is because more pollution is produced in making the products purchased more often by whites, but black and Hispanic minorities live in the places that that pollution ends up. Even our air is unequal these days. And if that doesn't make you angry, well, this might. Unless you're a fan, that is. The research out this month asked if violent music with violent lyrics predisposes you to violent images, making your world more violent. When the answer is yes, unless you already like that kind of music. Now, fans of death metal actually associate it with happy emotions, and hearing it doesn't push them towards violence, quite the opposite. So remember that the next time you're sucked into a mosh pit, everybody around you is thinking happy thoughts. And next up this month, we built a time machine. Sort of. Maybe you're wondering why I didn't lead with this. Well, it's because it's just not as good a time machine as you want it to be. In thermodynamics, as time moves forward, things move from order to disorder, or low entropy to high entropy. Think of breaking a triangle of pool balls. Now, in theory, you could whack the pool table just once in such a way that the balls all ended up rolling back into their exact same position, subatomic particles and all. Now, technically, they would have gone back in time. Researchers actually managed to do this, but on a much smaller scale. A single particle in a quantum computer. But as they added complexity to the system, going from two qubits to three qubits, the time machine's accuracy rapidly dropped off. In fact, the calculation becomes so complex that the authors conclude it's probably impossible to achieve time travel on a larger scale, say, the size of a DeLorean. Now, I don't know about you, but I am disappointed. Although, this news should cure that disappointment. A new stem cell therapy has cured a patient of HIV infection. Now, this patient had the blood-producing stem cells in their bone marrow replaced, but the doctors 
shows a donor who also carried a natural genetic mutation that gives blood cells resistance to HIV. Kind of like wiping your hard drive and reinstalling it with up-to-date antivirus software. This procedure actually worked once before, around 12 years ago, but people never thought it would be reproduced. That's why this is so exciting. 18 months on, without medication, that patient is still HIV free and resistant to further infection. But that's about all we've got time for this month. I've been Ali Jennings. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna leave you with these beautiful pictures of a treasure trove of Cambrian fossils, new to science, that have just been uncovered near the Danshui River in China. Some are over 500 million years old. If you love these fossils, you can read an amazing article about them on the Inside Science website. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.